We are here in Bahrain at the IISS uh, Middle East Center uh, at a conference on of Africa, the business opportunity, the geoeconomic and geopolitical uh, risks and challenges uh, to Africa's rise. And the first session this morning was opened with a paper by Fred Swanica of the African Leadership Program. Fred, you had a fascinating paper where you talk about five long-term trends, uh, four risks uh, to Africa's rise and the basic, uh, the three principles uh, that should define the way forward. Uh, will you summarize for uh, you know, those viewing this uh, very briefly uh, in a few minutes, the, these five long-term trends and the four risks? Certainly, so I believe that uh, when one looks at Africa, it's, it's, um, it's easy to get excited by the headlines that we see about, you know, it's the second fastest growing region in the world, it's got um, uh, six of the fastest growing countries in the next 10 years are supposed to come out of Africa and so forth, but without really understanding what are some of the fundamental forces that are driving this growth. And if one rushes into Africa without that deep understanding, then you know, you're know you not likely to build long-term sustainable businesses. So what I outlined in my paper was really five big forces that I, I believe will stick uh, on the continent for the next 20, 30 years. And if you invest in Africa or build a business around one of those five forces, then you're really building a sustainable business. And the five forces from uh, I talked about, was the first and foremost, is about improvements in, in governance. Power leadership and governance in Africa is nowhere near where it should be, or where it should, you know, are, it's not as com comparable to the rest of the world. It is vastly improved today from where it was 30 or 40 years ago, when the continent was, you know, for example, about 30 years ago, 33 countries in Africa were in some form of conflict. Today, that number is less than five. And Expectations of democracy and good governance uh, and accountability by uh, the population are much, much greater today. So when a, a coup d'etat happens, like what happened in Central African Republic two weeks ago, it's today much more of uh, a shock versus uh, an expectation um, in, in the continent. And that's the first thing that's really improving, because as long as countries are at war, no one's going to invest or build businesses. The second trend is around Africa's growing and young population. Africa is the fastest has the fastest growing population in the world, and it also has the youngest population in the world. So the, the median age of an African is about 18 years old. This compares to Germany, where it's 43.7. So we have a young population that's vibrant, and um, also people are having fewer children in Africa. So this means that uh, there's a large and growing consumer class which has fewer mouths to feed on an individual basis. And what this is bringing about is what they call demographic dividend, where people have more disposable income and able to spend money on goods and services, and that's also driving growth. The third factor is improvements in education. Africa today has uh, much lower rates of enrollment in primary school and secondary and, and, uh, secondary and at the tertiary level, but this underlies the fact that, um, this, this hides the fact that over the last 30 to 50 years, the sheer number of educated people in Africa has increased dramatically. Uh, you know, when Ghana got independence in 1957, there was something like 25,000 university graduates in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, if you exclude South Africa. And 80% of those came from just two countries, Ghana and Nigeria. Today, we have millions of people who have university education across Africa. And so with this better stock of educated people and, and with um, improvements in, in the inf infrastructure and environment in Africa, more and more educated people who left Africa have come back and are setting up businesses and contributing to, to the governments and so forth. So that's another the fourth trend I talked about is um, about uh, changes in the geo geopolitical um, uh, sphere. Uh, with uh, economies declining in the West and the aging population, the investors there need to get much higher returns. Pension funds need to get much higher, much higher returns for their liabilities and so forth. And uh, you have forces like China in, in investing in Africa. And um, it's much more, Africa today has a much better image than it did in the past. And so. This means more investments come to the continent, and that's another force that is, is driving growth. <laughs> the fifth force that's driving growth in Africa is urbanization. Today, 400 million people live in Africa's cities. Uh, that number is going to grow to 1.2 billion by 2050. So 800 million people are going to move into cities in Africa. And cities are really the building block of market economy because they bring together those who have goods to sell together with those who have uh, to, to buy those services. And therefore, um, as cities become more and more, uh, as Africa becomes more and more urban, urbanized, 
this market economy is going to take place, it also becomes much easier for companies to distribute goods and services because people are becoming more concentrated in these hubs. And that's a very powerful force for growth. At the same time, however, these four uh, these um, forces also lead to risks to Africa. Uh, and I talked about four risks. The one is the urbanization. <clears throat> if we don't plan our cities better and we don't invest in long-term infrastructure, then we end up creating you know, really a, a thousands of slums, which are going to lead to crime and unemployment and so forth. So we need to be, be, be cognizant of that risk. The risk around the growing population. Similarly, we're creating um, this workforce by one, of 1.2 billion, which will be the largest in the world by 2050. If we don't create jobs for those people, we risk creating political instability. Uh, and you've seen what happened in North Africa when we didn't give livelihoods to people and so forth. The third risk is around um, the these pure geopolitical forces that are taking place. Uh, if we don't, um, as Africans, come together and think about how we can negotiate better as a block and not just as individual countries, then wealth will be created in Africa, yes, but it won't be for our benefit as Africans. So we need to become more assertive and, and, and negotiate for a better share of the wealth that's being created in, in the continent. And the final risk is around um, the governance issue. Uh, you know, in Africa, governance is always a case of two steps forward, one step backwards. And you know, we keep making progress, but there's always dangers. And unless our leadership you know, you know, really looks at um, long-term improvements in governance, uh, we, we run the risk that um, this one force that has, in my opinion, been the greatest force that could bring about change in Africa can destroy the continent again. Uh, and finally, uh, I talked about the mindset for doing business uh, on the continent. And for me, uh, there are three key approaches to doing business on the continent. First, I think it's important to um, realize that the African growth story is not a short-term one. It's a long-term uh, project. It's going to take 50 to 100 years to develop Africa. And it's just starting to take off. One should view Africa today as perhaps where China was 30 years ago. And if you go in with a get-rich-quick mindset, you're bound to lose your shirt. You need to invest for the long haul and realize it's going to take a while uh, before you start seeing returns. Uh, the second um, mindset to doing business in Africa is to focus on cities. Um, I talked about how uh, Africa today has um, growing urbanization. There are today 50 cities on the continent that have more than a million people. Uh, and this is actually greater than uh, urban India today, for example, and in terms of the total population that lives in these cities. So as, as an investor going into the continent, it's daunting to try and tackle 54 countries. It's much easier to, to look at 50 cities. Uh, and that's where increasingly the development is going to take place, and so that's where we benefit. And the final um, mindset is about focusing on what I call north of the Limpopo River. The Limpopo River is the river that separates South Africa from the rest of the continent. South Africa, unfortunately, is not the most exciting place, in my opinion, to invest today. All these trends that I talked about are really shaping the rest of Africa. So urbanization, South Africa is already urbanized. Um, the population growth of South Africa is not growing as fast as the rest of the world. And so today, for example, this year, South Africa is projected to grow at 3%, whereas the rest of the continent is growing at between 6 and 7%. So that's where, really, if you want to capture these business opportunities, we should focus on the dynamism that exists north of South Africa. Thank you, Fred. I think that accurately sums up your brilliant paper, and thank you for being at the IISS. Thank you very much for having me.